12 years ago, the defined benefit scheme gave way for the contributory pension scheme in Nigeria. Like the name implies, it is fully funded, contributory, and individually managed. Hello and welcome to Pension Matters. My name is Princess Rabi Ibrahim. It's good to have you join us on today's episode of the program. On today's program, we'll be looking at the challenges and the prospects of the contributory pension scheme in Nigeria. But that will be after this time out. Don't go away. Do you know there is a new pension scheme in Nigeria? It is mandatory. It is contributory. It is fully funded. Based on individual retirement savings account. Under the supervision of the National Pensions Commission, the new pension scheme guarantees lifelong financial independence for every citizen of Nigeria in public or private employment. PENCOM says it's a new dawn. Call the National Pensions Commission now or log on to www.pencom.gov.ng for further details. PENCOM. Your contribution counts. Welcome back. The program is Pension Matters on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority, the NTA. It's now time for us to join Adanze Okorocha to find out what has been trolling in the pension industry. Adanze, over to you. Thank you very much, Princess. Hello, viewers. This is Pension Trail, where we will give you the latest update and happiness in the pension industry. I am Adanze Okorocha. On our story today, Pencom DG others appointed as members of London Stock Exchange. At the just concluded inaugural meeting of the advisory board of London Stock Exchange, financial experts from Nigeria were appointed with their other African counterparts to sit on the advisory board on African matters at the London Stock Exchange. Amongst them is the DG of National Pension Commission, Mrs. Chinelu Anoho Amazo, and this is as a recognition of her contribution to the development of the workforce even beyond retirement. The appointment includes the Chief Executive Officer of the Nigeria Stock Exchange, Mr. Oscar Onyema, and the Chairman of Seple Petroleum Development Company, Dr. Ambrose Chukweloka Ojako. The PENCOM DG and other members of the advisory group are expected to examine the issues of the market capitalization and provide advice that will better the African capital market. Next on our story today, ghost pensioners impossible under contributory pension scheme. Mr. E. Longe, the Chairman Pension Fund Operators Association of Nigeria, PENOP, says that the procedure for registration of retirement service accounts under the pension contributory scheme has made it difficult for ghost workers to receive pensions. He stated this in Lagos on allegation that pension fund operators connive with some civil servants and bank officials to generate fake PIN numbers. He said that it is impossible for anyone to generate fake PIN numbers because there is a central data bank with PENCOM that stores and issues PIN numbers. To cap it up on pension trial today, Pension Reform Act, so far so good. The Director General of National Pension Commission, PENCOM, Mrs. Chinelu Anohamazu, said that the journey to Pension Reform Act rose from the realization of pension deficit of about 2 trillion naira in the country. She made this known in Lagos that the Reform Act has been able to wipe off all the deficit, accumulating to a total of 6.3 trillion naira pension assets under the Contributory Pension Scheme (CPS). Well, viewers, this is the much we can take on pension trade today. Let's get back to Princess. Thank you, Andanzi, for that wonderful update on what has been trailing in the pension industry this week. Viewers, here on to pension matters, and up next will be the up close segment. And in an up-close segment today, I'll be discussing with the Head of Research and Strategy Management Department of the National Pension Commission in the person of Dr. Farouk Amenu. Sire, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Ali. Good. This is Pension Matters, and we are going to be talking about the CPS, that is the Contributor Pension Scheme, and a little about the Defined Benefit Scheme. Now. I wanted to tell our viewers what we gave rise to this contributory pension scheme we have in Nigeria today. Well, um, probably some people might remember, but um, if you look at what happened in 2004, um, it was a complete paradigm shift from the defined benefit scheme to the contributory pension scheme for several reasons. Most important of those reasons, the fact that 
there were public enterprises that were being um, that are being uh, privatized by the federal government at that time. Okay. And when the federal government looked into the assets and liabilities of those public enterprises, it was found out that the pension liability was just too huge. And uh, there was a need then to have a holistic solution to the problem that would not solve only the problems of the public enterprises, but also the public sector in general. Okay. If you look at the defined benefit scheme as it was run under the um, old regime, um, pension people are qualified for it when they serve the government for 10 years, and then they are qualified to have gratuity when they serve for five years. Exactly. Now, the administrator of those uh, pension schemes and the gratuity schemes were employees of the federal government, and we all know the weak administration of such schemes that still we are battling with. Mm -hmm. People are padding the pension you know, uh, database. People are doing all sorts of things. People will die. Their names will still remain on the database exactly. and people are taking. So there was a need to have a holistic review of this scheme in such a way that government will have a fiscal discipline, particularly in the way pensions are being administered in this country. The most important path then was what can we borrow from what other people were doing? Among you know, government looked into what was happening. You know, several committees came in and studied the pension schemes and gave you know recommendations to the government. But the final committee was the Fola Adiola committee okay. that actually recommended for the contributive pension scheme as being run in Chile. Now we had a slight variation from the way the Chilean scheme and the Nigerian schemes were designed. In Chile, for example, the central bank plays the role of the custodian, okay. and then the government is not contributing anything. Individual employees contribute to their pension funds. In Nigeria, we have a slightly different thing, but more fundamental of this uh, difference is the fact that both government and the individual. Uh, and individual employees of government you know, contribute at the beginning 7.5% each of the employees' monthly emoluments. Now, with the advent of the 2014 um, Act, that has changed to 18. Eight by I mean eight percent by the employer I and mean by the employee and ten percent by the by the employer. Okay. The contributory pension scheme that was introduced provided avenues to checkmate these situations. Number one, individual employees will go and open a retirement savings account. So you cannot have a retirement savings account if you are not an employee in the first place. Exactly. So when you um, uh, have your pension contributions remitted, your employer can only remit the pension contribution of a, you know, of an employee of that employer. Mm -hmm. So that's one, uh, that's one aspect. The second aspect is the fact that this pension scheme is being privately managed. And we have two institutions that we introduce. That is also a fundamental shift from the, chi from the Chilean model. The, the custodians that we introduce have access to all the monies they keep in trust. They don't have the power to do anything with that money unless they are ordered to do whatever by the pension fund administrator. Correct. And the pension fund administrator um, does not have access to the cash. They have only, ac uh, and, um, they only take investment decisions, they do administration, they mm -hmm. have access to information about the retirees, I mean about the various accounts that they manage and so on. The custodian gives a full guarantee of the pension assets under their custody. Should anything happen to the pension assets, the custodian or his parent company will pay. Hmm. So there is no way an administrator will order the custodian to do anything that is you know, dodgy and shoddy you know, against the rules and the custodian will go ahead and implement because they know if it comes to paying the lost you know, pension assets, is a custodian that will pay, not the administrator. Exactly. So there is this, um, you can say, um, sort of ring fencing of the pension assets. So it, number one, introduce accountability, transparency in administration of pension, but on top of that also put so much security around the pension assets so that we don't lose them. How has the contributory pension scheme advanced so far? Um, we have been able, um, over the years, almost 12 years now in existence, to um, 
provide sanity in the administration of pension mm -hmm. to generate a uh, you know, pool of uh, uh, funds, funds that can be used for investment. Exactly. These monies are being invested in various sectors of the Nigerian economy. So Nigeria's money being invested for Nigeria's use. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we have been able to do that. We have been able to also get you know, state governments to adopt the scheme even before the Pension Reform Act 2014 was signed into law, which mandates the state governments not to implement the contributive pension scheme. But we've got some commitments. Some state had already started implementing, like Lagos, like Kaduna, like Zamfara, Kano, Jigawa, and some other, about six, seven uh, states were already implementing the scheme before the Pension Reform Act 2014 made it compulsory for the states to implement the scheme. We have been able to come up with a brand new financial industry. Mm. the pension industry it created jobs it created other opportunities uh, for you know third party uh, service providers it has not only been um, an ordinary in, um, um, uh, industry in the financial sector but an industry that has impacted largely on the way things are done in you know, in the financial sector in this country what are the milestones, at least two to three milestones, you think that the CPS has been able to achieve since the 12 years it came into existence, particularly on the part of the retirees in this country? I think when we look at what we have done, the pension industry plays two important roles. Mm -hmm. One is social, another one is commercial. The social aspect is to ensure that uh, people who contributed receive their pensions as and when due. Mm -hmm. And this is the most important function of the pension industry. Ensuring that the assets are there and people when they retire, they get their monies as and when due. You know, people don't need to be called for yearly verification exercises. Mm -hmm. Once you are in, you are in and your PFU will pay you your, your, your money as and when due. I think we have been able to do that. The other aspect of what we do is the commercial aspect the insurance is one such and uh, one such sectors and then um, when you look at even the investment portfolio when we started we uh, did not allow some you know asset classes okay but with you know development of the industry also our you know understanding of how things work is expanding and nigerian you know, capital, uh, sort of financial industry is also developing. Mm -hmm. We are able to introduce, you know, several more asset classes. For example, the private equity. That's one other aspect of the financial Nigerian financial sector that was also shallow mm -hmm. when we started. When we actually took up the bull by the horn, we, you know, tried to see how we can sort of improve, develop the, the private equity market in the, in the country. Mm -hmm. And we have been able really to achieve so much. We worked with the Commonwealth Secretariat in 2011, I think, in Lagos, mm -hmm. to develop, sort of have a round table on how to develop the private equity in Nigeria. We have been able to achieve that. And we, uh, at the moment, have 5% allocation of the total pension portfolio in private sector, I mean, so in private equity investments. Doctor, we'll take a short break now, then I'll come back for you to throw more light into this, the milestones and then the challenges and the prospects of the contributory pension scheme. Viewers, you are on to pension matters, and I've been discussing with Dr. Farouk Aminu of the National Pension Commission. He's been giving us insight into the what made the CPS to emerge and over 12 years now how the CPS has been faring in Nigeria and we're discussing the prospects and the challenges of the CPS in Nigeria. Don't go away. Do you know there is a new pension scheme in Nigeria? It is mandatory. It is contributory. It is fully funded based on individual retirement savings account. Under the supervision of the National Pensions Commission, the new pension scheme guarantees lifelong financial independence for every citizen of Nigeria in public or private employment. Pencom says it's a new dawn. Call the National Pensions Commission now or log on to www.pencom.gov.ng for further details. Pencom, your contribution. Welcome back. The 
program is pension mothers. Doctor, before the break, I was going to ask you what is the difference between the contributory pension scheme and the defined benefits scheme? The major pension schemes in this world are the, are the defined benefit scheme or the defined contribution scheme. Okay. The difference is that in the defined, uh, defined benefit scheme, the benefits are defined. Okay. So I know if I serve for a particular number of years, this is what is going to come to me as pension. Mm -hmm. In the defined contribution scheme, in some, a lot of situations, I don't know what the pension will be at the end, but I know what I need to contribute today. A certain percentage I mean, of my take home is being asked from me, mm. and probably in some cases from me and my employer, and then put together, and that becomes my pension pot. Exactly. Okay. In between the two, there are variants. In some situations, you get a defined benefit scheme that is contributory. You'll be asked to contribute a particular percentage, uh, percentage of your total take home. Mm -hmm. But that does not in any way define the benefits that you are going to get at the end of the day when you retire. What this means is that you have to contribute and then your benefits are defined at the very beginning. You know that if you put this number of these are going to get this. this. If there is any shortfall between what you contributed and the benefits that have been agreed you know, to be given to you when you retire, the employer will come and match you know, the difference and provide the difference. As the regulatory body, PENCOM, of this industry, the insurance, in, uh, sorry, the patient okay, industry, yeah. I'm sure you must have faced some challenges in implement, implementing this contributory pension scheme in Nigeria. Can you tell us some of them? One of the first things, the first challenge that we face in this industry on the Nigerian factor are people who go and register with one PFA and they go and register with another PFA again and then with another one again. Double registration? Yeah, multiple registrations. Okay, multiple and so this has created a challenge in the first place as to which account do you send the pension contributions into. Hmm. Okay, so that is one big challenge. The other challenge still working with the Nigerian factor. You know, public sector institutions, at least at federal level, we ask them to provide payroll, nominal roles of their staff. Mm -hmm. And you get a lot of discrepancies. <laughs> you know, I had a situation where um, the head of a particular agency came here. He came personally, and then he was brought to, to, to me and were, you know, were discussing the issue. He was on level 15, step 3, yes. on that time, where he was placed on level 3, step 15. So the pension contributions for, for him were very, very much low. They're not very far away from you know, his, um, yeah, for, for, for his position. Mm -hmm. So, and then you get the other cases, also the robust cases, where somebody is on level 3, probably step 10, and then he'll be placed on level 10, step 3, or something <laughs> like that. So, th there were a lot of decisions trying to clean up the nominal roles of, um, of these MDAs. Yes. I know at one point, even, um, you know, we had to do a s special conference for the pension desk officers of all these MDAs okay. to show them what really we, I mean, they needed to do. And that to assist us, you know, give these contributions as they are supposed to be given when they come and the right amount. For the past 12 years that this bill has come into enactment, we noticed that only six, six, uh, I mean, this six million contributors have been registered under this scheme. Yeah, don't almost, think almost seven now. Don't you think it's low? There's low registration. Well, if you look at the Nigerian population, yes, that figure is too low. Because that's just a three point something percent, about three point seven, three point eight percent of Nigeria's population. If that is the case, Doctor, what, what what do we need to do to make sure that we increase the registration level? Yeah, th that's that's why we are introducing the macro pension plan. Exactly. That is the whole idea. Because if you want to get people to contribute, to participate in the pension plan, either those people are working for the organized private sector or they are working for the public sector. Yes. Okay, these are the 
only two sectors that have pension plans, you know, for their employees. Mm -hmm. Now, add total number of employees in, in these two sectors. They're not up to 50 million in this country. So even if I want to cover everybody in the organized private sector and the public sector, mm -hmm. we won't be able to go beyond the 50 million. Hmm. So how do we get Nigerians to come? The only way is to go to the informal sector. Exactly. That's where the prospect is. Dr. Mas, thank you so very much for coming on the program. You've been be able to enlighten our viewers, not only our viewers, even me. There are certain things you've mentioned here that I was not aware of, but today yeah. you've educated me. Thank you for coming on the program. Do our blood just next when we call you to come to explain one or two things to our viewers. Yeah, most welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Viewers, the program is Pension Matters, and I've been discussing with Dr. Farouk Amino of the National Pension Commission. He's been able to throw more light on the prospects and the challenges of the contributory pension scheme in Nigeria. He's been able to tell us the activities of his department at the National Pension Commission. It's not time for pension education with Patrick. Don't go away. Thank you very much, Princess. Hello, viewers. Welcome to this week's pension education segment. My name is Ibo Patrick. Today, we shall be looking at another mode of withdrawing from the contributory pension scheme, with particular reference to the 25% access for those who, as a result of either redundancy or as a result of dismissal from their employment, can have access to 25% of what is in their retirement savings account. The 25% is actually meant for people who, the categories of persons that I've actually mentioned earlier. How is this done? Uh, after about four months, of leaving a particular employment without another gainful employment, the would be beneficiary or investor or contributor can actually approach his or her pension fund manager and request for twenty five percent of the balance in his or her retirement savings account. And this an approval is actually gotten from the pension reform that is from the pension commission and once this approval has been given the PFA in turn remits 25 percent of what is in the balance of what what is in the retirement savings account and this is credited directly to the account of the contributor now once this is done the remaining balance is not cannot be accessed until the individual reaches the age of either 50 or maybe length of service as the case may apply in this situation. The 25% is usually approved for those who um, re were affected as a result of maybe a sack, I said redundancy earlier, or in the case of others who maybe due to the service of their institution or organization um, allows for early retirement. In this case, he or she can have access to either 25% of what is in the balance of their retirement savings account. Thank you, Mr. Patrick, for that pension education. Viewers, on that note, we come to the end of our program for today. That's our package of pension matters for this week. We do hope we tune in next week, same time, same station, same day, for another exciting episode of Pension Matters. Until then, I enjoy you to enjoy your weekend and remain blessed.